In this video, I want to talk about the benefits of having some cross-sectional data which has some time variance in it. So the idea here is that if we have a particular model which we're interested in testing, so we are looking at the various factors which affect crime, for example, and we're interested in particular on whether a particular type of policing policy actually had an effect to lower the crime rate. So the idea here is that the variable police takes on a value of one if that city actually instituted that policy and it takes on a value of zero otherwise. And as I've mentioned in passing, we're talking about individual cities here. Okay, so what we could do is if we didn't have any variation across time, we would take a sample of individuals from our population. So we would take a sample of cities from our entire population of cities. And the idea on that particular sample is that we could estimate this above model. And perhaps when we estimate this above model, we find that the estimated crime rate is equal to 35 plus five times this policing variable, this dummy variable. Okay, so why is there a problem here? Well, what we'd expect is, well, our null hypothesis in this above model here is that the effect of this particular policy is nothing. But the alternative is that we expect that this particular policing policy actually has an effect to lower the rate of crime. So we would expect that beta is less than zero. So how come we might have got a positive value for this particular policing policy in our estimated model? Well, the answer is, it's because of the fact that cities which perhaps have higher rates of crime might have actually instituted this particular policing policy, seeing that they needed to, or thinking that they needed to reform their policing practices. So when you look at a straight regression of crime rate on policing, it looks like in those areas whereby this policing policy was instituted, that the crime rate is somewhat higher. So that's the problem with using cross-sectional data at just one point in time. What we could do though, is we could look at that same population of individuals or individual cities in this case, at time period one, where the time period one is before this latter time period. And importantly, it is before this particular policing policy was actually instituted in any cities. So the idea at time period one is that we might also have a random sample of cities. And what we could do on that random sample of cities is we could estimate the effect of being one of those cities which is in the future going to institute this policing policy. So the idea here is that we would regress crime rate on this future indicator of whether they instituted this policy and we might find these results here. So notice that the effect of being a city which in the future introduces this policing policy is 10 whereas after this policy is introduced the effect is only to increment crime by five cases per, let's say, 100,000. So it looks like the gap between those cities which didn't institute the policy and those who did has decreased over time, which might actually be indicative of the fact that this policing policy has actually had some sort of effect. So how can we quantify this? Well, the way we can quantify this is we can use our estimated model down here to calculate the average crime rate of cities at time period one who did introduce this policing policy. And just using this model down here, we find that it is gonna be 50 because we're gonna have 40 from this term here plus 10 times one because uh, the dummy variable takes on the value of one if the actual city did introduce this policing policy. And then what we could do is we could calculate the average crime rate for those cities which didn't introduce that policy. So I'm gonna put an N here for not introduced at time period one. And from our model down here, we find that this is just gonna be equal to 40.
And notice that this average estimated crime rate of those cities which didn't introduce the policy is essentially just the average crime rate of, uh, across those cities which didn't introduce the policy. We don't really need this estimated in here. I'm just including the estimating because we're using this estimated model here. So we do this at time period one, and then we could do the same, same thing at time period two. So we estimate the average crime rate for those cities which did introduce the policy at time period two, or in between time periods one and two. So we're giving this policy some time to affect or to have an effect. And we find from this below model that the effect is, or the average crime rate is gonna be 40. Whereas the average crime rate for those cities which didn't introduce this policing policy at time period two is gonna be equal to 35. So the gap between those that did and didn't introduce the policy in the future at time period one before the policy was introduced was 10. Whereas at time period two, this gap has lowered to five. And it turns out that this particular difference in gap can be used to calculate essentially the effect which this policing policy has had on crime rates. And what we do is we just take off the, or we start off with the difference in gap at time period two, and then we take off the gap at time period one, and we get a value of minus five. So this differences in difference, or differences in difference estimator as it's known, has found that the effect of policing is to lower the crime rate by five units. And notice that even though I haven't introduced anything about using a pooled cross-sectional model, this mere fact that we've had some variation across time has allowed us to estimate the effect of this policy instrument, which would have been completely impossible if we just had a sample of those cities at one point in time.